So well, you know, and and I'll tell you this: it's it's been a good time, and I know how long you want to go, Jason. But I know mm-hmm. people got speculations, people got questions. Do we want to do a couple of the hard hitting questions? Yeah, I was gonna, ask, and I know you can't answer this because okay. uh, I already asked you this before, and someone else asked this earlier in the chat. FT one X, what's the new QRP? FT one XF or whatever F- it is. FTX one F. Yep. Yes. FT. Uh, yeah. Okay. So latest, uh, latest. I want to know. My question to you, uh, maybe a month ago, I don't remember when it was. Was mm-hmm. are we going to see that at Hamvention? In, in t- all intents and purposes, yes. Um, okay. We're we're waiting for the FCC, and obviously, typical. We're, yeah, we're, regardless of what side of defense you're on politically, I'm not turning this political yeah. thing or anything. Mm-hmm. It, it takes a little while. We we introduced it, you know, at Tokyo Ham Fair. It was under mm-hmm. the dome because it wasn't type accepted Evo over in Japan. We are waiting to do a global release on it. Um, the reason mm-hmm. we are waiting because people have said, well, you haven't done that in the past with other radios. Correct, but we have never we have not seen such a surge of people buying radios in other countries and then mm. like buying them online on eBay and Alibaba and, and, and places mm-hmm. that you really question, you know, where they got the radio from and are bringing it here. And so many people are saying, well, it's not working now. It's not this. And unfortunately by FCC law, as a manufacturer, we are, we can't work on the radio because it has bands, which are not legal in the U S mm. you don't want to see that happen. We're mm-hmm. waiting for it. Right now, we have not had to get full FCC type accepted yet. Um, once again, new new political things, new everything like that, mm-hmm. all the kind of things. You know, we avoided a government shutdown because I would tell you, if the government shutdown was going to happen, that means things were going to be pushed back even more. Yeah. That, in essence, been inverted. So we're hoping to have at least a demo of it at Hamvention right. Right. if we don't have it out <clears throat> sooner. I will tell you this, and here's what I can tell you this. There is a modularity to it, which a lot of people already saw at Tokyo Mm -hmm. Hamvention. You Mm -hmm. know, yes, people are saying, well, there's no tuner. Well, no, there's the add-on tuner. Why didn't it built in? Well, not everybody wants a tuner. Well, Mm -hmm. that's stupid. Well, no, it's not. Not everybody wants a tuner. Some want a Mm -hmm. tuner. You can add one on there. You can't. If you say there was, then they'd be like, well, why'd you have a tuner on it? It's just going to make it heavier. That's stupid. Yeah, exactly. So, So there is a lot of modularity to it. Now, what I can tell you is this. It is going to change the way and the concept of operating. That's okay. what I'm going to go ahead and tell you, and that's really all I can tell you right now. What hmm. what what this is going to do is it's going to foster in a it's going to foster in a great way of operation, and I feel that this radio is going to kind of be the bridge to things. Mm-hmm. Um, on how it operates because yes it is hf plus two meters plus 70 centimeters on there it -hmm. is going to be 10 watts it's not a traditional qrp some people say qrp is five watts less you know that kind of thing so there is some things to it on there for operation but you'll see when this radio comes out and as it starts to progress you're going to be like Mm -hmm. wow this is this is a new concept and innovated okay do you have any like juices details like we all want to know like like price points or we don't because by law with FCC and they crack down on this. I guarantee you they they watch it heavily on it. Mm-hmm. Um, we cannot offer it for sale, rent, lease, or um, distrib- distribution until it is FCC type accepted. So until right. we have that actual document in our hands with the stamp of approval saying this is the FCC ID and it is approved. We can't even offer it for mm-hmm. sale. That's why, if you notice, the dealers, the dealers are offering a pre-reservation on there. Yes, and and you put a small amount of money down mm-hmm. on it to hold your place in line. And some people said, "Well, I'm not going to do that because what if my money?" And that's that. Most of the dealers let you convert it over to something else. So yes, you know that yeah. kind of thing. But um, that's why they're only taking pre-registers now. Some dealers across the world don't do the $35. They, they're not offering it. So they're putting outrageous prices. I already had one person tell me it's going to be 9,000 pounds. And I'm like, (laughs) 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 wrong, right? (laughs) You know, the one-on-one MP is not even that much, but um, right. Yeah. (laughs) There has been no contrary to internet speculation or anything. There has been no announced price yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. I would like to see, um, Someone had mentioned this, I, sh- I think, shortly after that Tokyo Ham Fair. I would like to see like this be like kind of a, a baseline model that you can add on to later, like even like put into a hundred watt amp K 
case that you could like have and drop that into and create basically an FT710 or FTDX10 out of this new radio and kind of have, oh, you want to take it out for QRP? Pull it out and run away with it. You want to use it in the ham shack? Drop it in there. 100 watts? Great. Something like that. I'd like to see something so like a that. Modular, but, uh, like modular connections? So yeah, basically like a, like a QRP radio that, well, and, and in in a small degree, the uh, the Elecraft KX2 was, or I'm sorry, the Elecraft K2 was like that. The original radio was 10 watts, and you could, and everything Elecraft does is modular. The original radio, the kit you built was 10 watts, and you can you could add a 100 watt amp into it, mm -hmm. and and then you know you you could it, it, once you added all that, I don't think you could take it apart very easily. But you know, being a small form factor and whatnot, you can easily plug and play it into like you could have a base in your shack, and you could attach this uh, this 10 watt QRP radio to the base and then it would become a 100 watt radio or something like that so uh, something uh, something like really modular like that is is kind of there's been some speculate I mean people speculate about stuff all day long who knows but um, I mean it's it's cool to kind of kind of see stuff like that Just I am excited like I know the answer. <laughs> I am, yeah, I am excited. Yeah, like a laptop docking station. Digital Rancher says. Yeah. Um, I am excited cool. that it it appears, John, that that radio because I don't think I've really talked to you about that radio much. Mm -hmm. That radio appears to be dual display. Is that right. okay? Right. okay. It, is, it is dual display, and if so, you actually read the information out there, it does uh, say okay. dual, dual simultaneous receive on there. So, yes, there are there are some details that are out there about it right now. So what mm -hmm. you see. What you see out there that dealers have had or that we've released, mm -hmm. that is information that we can release that is not going to be impacted by FCC type acceptance. You have right. to remember, you know, when it comes there, it's the receiver specification, power mm -hmm. out, those kind of things. That's what gets that hold up in there. Mm -hmm. But what we were able to release, we have released information on that so far. Once we, and, and I will say it, it's, Kind of, there's a lot of holes in it, right? You know, because we mm. there are some things that we have to wait to get approval to fill in those gaps. And like kind of joke around, it's called like dino DNA. Remember in Jurassic Park, they like, well, whatever we couldn't fill, we kind of just filled in, right? <laughs> right. We're waiting to <laughs> fill the gaps in once we get that information. But but definitely, um, from what I can s legally say, and mm -hmm. I'm allowed yeah. to say, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there's yes, every there's not a person standing next to me watching me right now. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you you'll like it and and definitely I'll be more I, happy to come on once we get it and kind of go through mm. the rundown out there. It's 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 going to be a pretty big game changing radio. Good, yeah. Well, I I have one reserved, and definitely want to bring you back on to talk about it once I get one in my hand. Did I know this is you know this is kind of one of those things where it's like, hey, we would like to have it by then. But I thought I remember hearing from the Tokyo Ham Fair that it was speculated to be released in Q1 of this year. Is that was that the the, the correct verbiage was actually the first half. The first half, okay. Yeah, first okay. half. A lot of okay. people. A lot of people. Okay. A lot of people thought they said, "Oh, the first of the first of the year." It was like, no, the first half of the year. So that you know, technically okay. it was all the way up through okay. June. Um, and once again, we knew because once again, it's not only us. It's Japan approval. It's the yeah. UK yeah. approval. It's it, there's a lot to it. Well, the Tokyo Ham Fair was very unique. At least I think it was unique this year because you guys, Kenwood and Icom, all announced a new radio, mm -hmm. and and none of them were the same type of radio. Like Icom has the 200 watt competition grade HF radio that sits on your desk. You guys have a really nice looking new QRP take with you radio and Kenwood's got the new tri-band uh, VHF UHF radio so I was like okay you guys coordinated this obviously we get one of everything that's new and uh, someone had said Q1 during that and it, it might have been ICOM because they released theirs last month but I was making a joke I was like yeah Q1 basically means March 31st so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was so I was I was really really hoping to see that radio by um by by hamvention because you know that's you're getting into like you're almost halfway through the year in hamvention so you're about a month away yeah but yeah be, be crossing our fingers to to see if we can see that then yeah we're like i said we we said the first part of the year because um mm -hmm. the first half of 2025 mm -hmm. because of once again we knew the 
we know the logistics of timing and trying to plan everything doesn't go as well as what we would think or we would hope. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll be honest with you, Japan is, you know, a lot of people have asked questions about like the S version or the H version. So we were talking about letters earlier and the R and the E's, the mm-hmm. S and the H's. You got to remember in Japan, they go by license class dictates the radio they can buy. Not like in the U S I mean, a technician can buy an HF rig. They just know not to operate it. Yeah. Not in, not in Japan area. Like you buy a radio, you have to buy it for your license class. And that means band privileges and power privileges. Really? Yeah. So that's why, that's hmm. why a lot of people have done that. They've bought in those radios over in the other countries and are like, well, it only transits 144 to 146. And on the HF bands, it only puts out 10 Watts. Mm. Yeah, you got a Japan radio. Like, yeah, you know, well, <laughs> my job to know, right? So, uh huh, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, 